Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. Oh, sorry, that's a bit wiggly. It's Wednesday, which means it's hump day. And every hump day, I like to do a live video at 7.30 Pacific. And I like to basically address a topic or a question or request that anyone has. So if you ever have any requests for topics regarding sex, kink, relationships, etc., just let me know and I'll cover it. Oh, hello, Mr. Fnord. Long time no see. So this week, the topic um, that I'm going to be discussing is medical play. Medical play. Um, yeah, and I actually get a lot of questions on medical play. Um, so I do want to make sure that people are aware. I might throw some extra reminders out there as people join with the live video. This is medical play I'm talking about. Not everyone is comfortable around that topic. Um, some people can get physically queasy or just maybe squicked out emotionally, um, etc. Hello, thank you for joining. Um, I'm not doing any medical play on this video. I'm just talking about medical play. Um, when they say, basically the word play in terms of BDSM is used for the activities that you're doing. So like impact play um, usually involves things that involve impact like spanking, flogging, paddling, caning, etc. Medical play involves any kind of BDSM play or fetish kind of etc. that involves something to do with... Mm, the medical fantasy. I'm not gonna say medicine, but I mean like the medical fantasy. You're not giving someone medicine. You're maybe dressing up as a nurse or a doctor, doing some role play. Um, medical play usually refers to, yeah, fetish. It usually refers to, um, and there's a whole broad spectrum. Let me know if I'm missing something. When I hear the term medical play, I typically think, okay, like a medical table, you know, like you go to the doctor, you maybe have your, uh, well, what is the word for that? Brandon, what's the word when you put your feet in the things? Stirrups. Stirrups thank you very much. That's what I think of. Um, I often think of, um, sometimes I do think of like nurses outfits and stuff. I used to work as a nurse and that was always a really interesting one because I kept my scrubs and still use them for medical play, but anyways. Um, maybe things like needles. And I know that is one that really can squick people out is needles. Now I'm not talking about, um, <laughs> I'm not talking like injecting medicine. Usually when it comes to needles, I'm talking play piercings. Um, does anyone remember, I know I wasn't the only one that did this in high school. Like you would take safety pins and stick them through your skin and play with them that way. That's basically like it gives you my maybe the idea of what some people do with needles. Um, sometimes it's just like a surface piercing where you just go in the skin. It's not meant to stay there. It's just something that you might play with. Oh, people are giving me thoughts on what kind of medical play. Latex gloves. Oh yeah, that's definitely a thing. Um, I do use nitro because latex is a common allergy, but even the smell of latex can get people really kind of going. Surgical scrub sometimes gives me that like positive connotation feeling. And I'm like, oh yeah, surgical scrub. That makes me think of some medical play. Um, someone said high heels and skirt. Like nurse with a high heels and skirt. That's not usually today's nurse, but I mean, it's your fantasy. You can do what you want with it, right? Um, sometimes medical play might involve scalpels. Like some people do artistic cutting. Um, it might not even involve actually cutting. Maybe some people like the fear that is associated with any kind of like medical play. Oh, hi. Thanks for joining. Much mewing. Do you want to come join? Mm -hmm. Yes? No? You want to come join? Okay, Brandon's coming to join. Uh, Togepi, I love you. You need to get out of the chair. Sorry. Togepi was sitting in the chair next to me. Brandon's joining. He's going to talk about medical play. Come pull up a I wanna, chair. I want to disagree with Can you. Can I give you a mic? Oh, you want to disagree with me on some things? Please do. What do you think of when you think of medical play, well, Brandon? <laughs> because most people, when they say medical play, aren't referring to being cut or playing. Not needles. necessarily. Those um, are just those some are of usually, the things. Those are usually specific other play types. Mm -hmm. 
cutting and, and needles and stuff yep. like that, people will ask specifically for play piercing. If you're talking medical play, it usually involves like medical supplies and mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. examinations and yeah. being made to feel helpless and like you're being examined like an object because like yeah, yeah. when you go when like you go to a doctor they don't like i mean they're, they they look at you like a person but you're part of their job they're not like like so it's it's kind of this like objectification kind that of that can be part of the fantasy one second i'm just gonna i mean that's yeah, that's only, those are only a couple of examples. I wasn't quite sure. done going through the no. different forms of medical play and medical fetishes that people have. No, I know. I was just disagreeing with you about the, uh, the, the needle play. Needle play is a form of medical play. Kind of. <gasps> you don't think so? I think it's a very specific, separate kind of play. But it like still you can, falls under the category of medical you can, play. You can make it medical play yeah. if you make it all nursey and stuff like that, but I mean, like, how many times have you seen people do needle scenes and they're doing it as medical play? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. I'm not saying... Okay. Um, I'm doing the Taste of Kink coming up mm -hmm. um, for MBK, and I'm doing needles. I've done needles many, many times. Uh, for Taste of Kink. Sorry, there now you're connected by the there, way. There, now you can so probably people can hear, hear you better. <laughs> so, with the Taste of Kink, a lot of times people come to me and say that they have a strong fear of needles mm -hmm. that is associated with their medical background and experiences. That's fair. But they want to play with that and overcome it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. Um, a lot of times that I'm playing with needles, it's very much a medical play kind of scenario for me because I often, like, the way that I like to talk to people when I'm doing needles with them is a lot of the similar way that I talked to my patients in the past when I would be doing needles, like making sure they're taking deep breaths at the right time, telling them how good of a job they're doing, you know, yeah, that, sometimes I, I mean, wear my scrubs, like, needles can definitely fall under the category of medical play. They can. I'm not, not saying always. that they automatically do because, like, I mean, you have that association because you have a medical background, but a lot of the people that you're playing with don't. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, when I play with needles, it has nothing to do with medical play at all because I don't have that association and mm. I'm not doing it. I'm doing it for an endorphin high. I'm doing it yeah, yeah. to get the person, yeah. like, spaced right out. So it's mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't automatically assume that it's medical play. That's fair. What are your thoughts? Let me know what you think. Because um, you're right. When, as soon as you say needle play, immediately, I think medical play. But that's not, I know that's not always the case. I I've done, like, corsets with needles is, I wouldn't call cor that medical play. I've seen quite a bit of needle play, and almost none of it is ever, like, someone in a nurse uniform. I'm not or, always in a nurse uniform. No, I'm, but uh, that's my point. Like, most of the time... It's not really medical play. Mm -hmm. uh, Braska Knuckle says, needle play for me hits the same button as getting pierced. So yummy, but not medical play for me. Yeah. That's totally valid. That makes sense. Yeah. Same with cutting. And I mean, you can do it. Cutting You can do it can like, be medical play, but that's, isn't necessarily That's the thing, play. right? Like, cutting is its own type of play. And I mean, you can incorporate it into medical play, yeah. but it has to be like... The medical play is the fetish of like the 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 like the operating room mm. and the scrubs and the feel of being in a medical environment. That's the medical play fetish, right? Like you can do cutting with the medical play and you can do cutting without it. Like um, you know, like you could do scarification and then like oh, cutting totally. and, yeah, like, yeah. and all of those things and that mm -hmm. doesn't like when you say medical play, I don't go to cutting. Right? I don't go to No, those. that was just an that's example. Stuff. I know, but like they're they're separate thing. I love you. It's, it's, it's... Lindsay separate... Lou says needle play can definitely fall into medical play, but I don't think needles are inherently a medical fetish. I think that's, that's, right. that's, that's sounds what like what saying. you're saying. Yeah, that's what I'm trying okay. to say. Okay. Um, what about, and I'll give the example of saline infusions. Um, for those that maybe aren't familiar with saline infusions, that's when you have a, like a legit saline bag that you would get um, from the hospital, like an IV bag. But instead of putting it um, intravenously into your bloodstream, you put it just under the skin to swell things. Um, so oftentimes it's like 
chest, like breasts, breast uh, labia, yeah. scrotum, really common. Um, if anyone has heard of this, is apparently really big in like Japanese club kind of culture. The forehead donuts. I was talking about this last night and people were nodding their head and I'd only recently heard of this. It, like this forehead donut, and of course it's temporary. The saline infusions will last maybe a day or two, like three max. Mm -hmm. Not usually, but I've heard them lasting up to three plus days. Yeah, um, I guess it depends on but how usually high just like area it is. less than a day. Depends on how yeah. Depends on a lot of factors, but that's around. It's temporary, very very temporary. Um, you would put the saline right, like the needle right in here, until you have like a little lump on your forehead, and then once it's done, you just take your finger and you push it in um, until it settles that way, and then it becomes a ring around your forehead, and then you can go up for the evening and have like a forehead donut. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard of people doing what's called Cinderella lips, where they do some saline injections into their lips, and it's just saline. It's essentially salt water um, that our body just absorbs, and then you pee it out. It's not, yeah, it's, it's pretty, as long as you're doing it in a clean way and you know how to handle the materials and handle that in a clean and safer way, um, it's fine. You're not like doing intravenous kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, hang on. Uh, much mewing, the donut still weirds me out a bit. It is, I mean, everyone's got their thing. Mm -hmm. I just, I think it's more fascinating than anything. I'm like, what is this thing? Um, Lindsay Lou says, I've never heard of these skin level saline infusions. How wild new thing to learn about. Um, I actually have a saline infusion scene happening this weekend and I'm, I am excited about it. I, um, I am familiar, though it's been a very long time since I've done anything like that. So I was planning on practicing on myself. I was actually gonna do that tonight, but I'm still waiting for some of the materials to be shipped. And yeah, I'm a little bit scared. So I might actually have to go out and find a way to get them tomorrow. Usually I order my medical supplies from a, like a medical warehouse, but they don't have all their stuff in, so everything's not in yet, and I'm kind of like, mm, but I'll figure it out. Because I need to practice on myself. I would like to practice on myself so I can be a lot more confident and ready to go for the weekend and be a responsible player in that sense. But yeah. Back to medical play. Back to medical play. Um. So yeah, so basically I was kind of going at saline infusions. Is that like... I feel like it, that could definitely fall into the category of medical Yeah, play. well, it has a lot of the paraphernalia. I mean, you have, like, a saline bag, and you have... I mean, you can make you it so IV that it's lines, not... lines, butterfly needles. Yeah, you can make it so that it's not, obviously, but, like, it kind of lends itself to it. I mean, you just get, like, a stand for the IV bag, and you put on some scrubs, and it's pretty much your... But, like, your the scene I'm doing, I don't intend on wearing scrubs. Would that I still know. be medical play? I mean, it depends on how you handle it. How you're treating your patient... Or your partner. Mm -hmm. Right? Love it. I feel like, yeah, maybe that's just my experience. Because I have the nurse background, even when I'm not trying to be like the nurse in a scene, people are like, I'm getting a nurse vibe from you hardcore. Because that's what I'm used to. And like when I do things that involve needles or medical supplies, I do kind of go into nurse mode, whether or not I'm intending it. And so people are like, getting nurse vibe from me hard. So... Yeah, but medical plan. <laughs> uh, I mean, it could maybe feel like it to them. Yeah. <laughs> if you're all like nursing them by accident and they're like, Arr. yeah, yeah, yeah. Lindsay Lou says, I feel like medical play really relies on textures, smells, and sights that one would typically remind someone of a medical setting. Yeah, and the role play involved is a, is a big part of it. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need all of the paraphernalia if you're, if you're you know, treating the person like a patient yeah. and talking to them like one. And I mean, you can make it like, you can make it like, you know, sterile hospital kind of medical play, or you can make it like scary basement psych patient medical play, right? Like, so there's a, there's a pretty big category yeah. there if you want to mess with people. Brassic and Knuckles says accidental nursing. That's my life. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I'm going to nurse mode. Your nurse is showing. I, my nurse is showing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's interesting that you mentioned that because at least for me, you mentioned smells and textures. When I'm putting my gloves on with the smell of surgical scrub or rubbing alcohol, um, or iodine. Or iodine, yeah. Um, even just like grabbing the sharps container and like the way it rattles when you grab it. Makes me. Full sharps container. Yeah. 
and they're always half full. Ha not half empty? Feels, it feels like it. Yeah, I mean, half full. <laughs> they're half full. Such Today's an a half full kind of day, I guess. Speculum, says Mr. Venord. Of course you would go to Speculum. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. Or sounds, right? Or right? sounding. Sounding, I would say, doesn't isn't necess inherently medical play, but could follow fall yeah, under the I category mean, of medical play. Yeah, but I mean, sounds are medical paraphernalia, so it's pretty easy to go that way. Yeah, yeah. Sounding, if anyone's not familiar, I like slight warning might make you a little squicked out. <laughs> so, well, because some people are like, Ugh! sounding is when you do urethral insertions, like a catheter. Um, like a catheter, but it's not with the rubber hose. It's no, it's like, a metal rod. It's a metal rod, yeah. usually. Um, and it's not intended to be painful. No. It is supposed to be pleasurable. It's or supposed to be intense. Intense. Yeah. Or scary, but it's not supposed to be painful. Yeah. You, those are sensitive tissues. Um, yeah, it's an interesting sensation. Yeah, what does it feel like? Intense. intense. I don't have another word for it. It's just weird. <laughs> Weird and intense. Weird and intense, yeah. yeah. Uh, much mewing. Setting and role play might make medical play more tangible. Mm -hmm. Props help, though. For sure. Yeah, I mean, props such as... I mean, wearing the material is going to be a big part of it. If you can wear the scrubs. Even if you just have one of those like little Costumes. face masks. If you have one of those, <laughs> if you have a patient gown, perfect. Oh, with the butt hanging out. Oh, yes. there's so many things you could do yeah. with that. Yeah, and I mean, like, you can probably get some, like, uh, secondhand IV poles and stuff like that. And things to hang stuff off of. Even if you don't have anything really to hang off of it, you can just get some medical tubing or something to look scary. I don't know. <laughs> Choke someone just with medical it, tubing. Stick it, <laughs> stick it behind the chair that they're yeah. sitting in, just to be creepy. You know. um, another good prop. I do have a stethoscope from my previous work, so just hanging one around your neck can be kind of fun. There's something even just when wearing it, you definitely feel like you're in that medical environment. Um, Mr. Fnord, it is. I assume you're talking about sounding, but it's very intense. Mm hmm. Yeah, sex while camping is really fucking intense, too. I hate you. <laughs> I can't help myself. Lindsay Lou, BP, like blood pressure cuff, stethoscope, reflex hammer are all fun additions. I don't know how many are familiar. The Wartenberg wheel mm -hmm. is a medical tool. It's not really used for medicine anymore. It used to be. That was actually so used... And violet wands were to test sensation, like loss of uh, physical sensation. Yeah, meta violet wands too. If you want to go like quack doctor and be like really like, like doing like <laughs> doing like, like weird mad experiments. Scientist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mad science. Mad. So I need to do a mad scientist. Yeah. See Lab coat over fun. top of your uh, scrubs just to be yeah. creepy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Giant mirror thing on your forehead for whatever reason those were there. For <laughs> you know. The well, discs. there's the light or the I, disc you're talking about. Yeah, I mean the old time. Maybe it was stuff. to reflect light. Maybe it was. Probably was. Before they had lights that they could do that with. Probably. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm what else would be medical fetish or medical play? What constitutes as medical play? I mean, like it's invasive open. exams, and I mean, Mr. Fenard pointed out speculums. Speculums. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even like rectal exams, prostate examinations. Yeah. And it's a lot about like just the way you're interacting with the person too. I mean, mm -hmm. you can put an, a speculum in someone and have it not really be medical play, but like if you go poking around in there and start commenting on their mm. anatomy or something like that, or like ask them invasive questions while you're doing it, stuff like that, that your doctor might ask. You know what I'd want to do? I like wouldn't, weird... I wouldn't, I would love to do a scene where it was like a medical examination, but I wasn't like talking to them a lot. I would just walk over to my chart and just start writing things. Mutter to yourself. And just be like, hmm, yeah. And not say what it was. They'd be like, what is she writing? What is she thinking? That could be fun. Yeah, or you could <laughs> disregard your patient and just do whatever you want to them kind of thing. Be like, 
no, what you're experiencing isn't real, and then just do like weird random things to them and be totally Yeah. Different. Um you if you want to do like a co topping scene, meaning like you have two tops. Have a nurse. You could have you and you could do like good cop, bad cop with that. Like you could yeah. have either like the nurse being really evil as soon as the doctor walks out of the room and the nurse is gonna like do horrible things to you or vice versa so that you're like nurse, the nurse is this like, is I'm what so the doctor is doing and the nurse is like oh you're just being a difficult patient today aren't you that could be real mind fuck or like or yeah or like i'm so sorry that the doctor's doing this to you and then the doctor comes in and he's like mm -hmm. <laughs> um I've got this speculum here <laughs> Uh, and much meaning says reflex hammers could be interesting in a low impact type scene. That could be interesting. For certain things. Yeah. Your leg's not working. Ah! Or like, I'm gonna test your reflexes on your ribs. <laughs> Ow! Ow! <laughs> oh, that's too good. Much meaning also says working a bit of shame into the scene could be interesting. Yeah, I mean, definitely that takes a lot of negotiation. And be prepared for landmines. Mm -hmm. But. Ooh, dental exam, that's awful. Uh, Lindsay Lou, yeah, dental exam. Yeah. Yes! You can get. I, I but, remember. <laughs> hang on. Bite guard, pokey things, tongue depressor, then filling drooly mouth with. I remember things. we went that I went amazing. to a, I went to a flea market in Arizona and they one of the booths just had like dental picks and like all sorts of weird <laughs> things. Was this recent or like no, years, no, this years was, ago? This oh, okay. Was a few so years I was like, ago. we went to Phoenix a no, long no, no. ago. Why but didn't like, you let me in on that? But like if you go to like a like they have like all sorts of weird things at flea markets and stuff. Mm -hmm. You can find all sorts of stuff. Oh, Julie joined. Hi, Julie. If you're Hi. still here. Don't be afraid. You, you should be afraid. No, it's okay. We're talking about medical play. Um, yeah. And different types of medical play. Um, away from, like, the fantasy a little bit. Um, I did want to kind of touch a little bit up on what people get from it like why is it this something people enjoy which is a really loaded question um but i'm more thinking of how to talk to somebody that is not at all familiar with it um i don't like to use the word vanilla um because i know people that go quite offended being called vanilla because they think it means boring which i'm like vanilla is my favorite flavor oddly enough but um, I love vanilla ice cream. So I just like good. to put some chocolate sauce or some fruit in it. But anyways, so um, I go by Muggles. So if there are Muggles <laughs> asking about medical play, like why would you do that? What is your answer typically? I have a, an interesting story. I had an aunt that asked me why anyone would want to do piercing play. And <laughs> like, I, like this is at a family event, and we're like, I'm sitting with my aunt and my mom, and my aunt's like, why would anyone do that? And my mom stops her. She's like, he will answer your question. Make sure you want to know the answer mm -hmm. before you ask it. And I mean, with piercing play, I, I talked about like endorphin rushes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But medical play, I'm less familiar with. Right. Like why you would want to do that. Exactly. Lindsay Lou says, I'm disabled. So I've been in, in and out of doctor's offices a lot. So med play is a great way to reclaim those spaces. Well, for sure. That's a great I answer. I love that. That is a really great answer. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that suffer from chronic pain that engage in sadomasochism because it's a way to be in pain, but in a way that you are in control. Mm -hmm. um, I played with somebody very briefly where I, in, um, I kind of brought on a seizure. He was epileptic, and that was intentional, and he loved it. He was so happy because he was like, I don't have control over my seizures. And this time I chose to do it. And there's something really empowering about that. Mm -hmm. So that is a really, really good answer. And absolutely valid. I think, like, good for you for reclaiming that. That's amazing. Um, there are a lot of uh, medical professionals in the kink scene. Like, a lot. Um, a lot of nurses. A lot of nurses, a lot of care aides. Mm -hmm. I've met a number of paramedics. Mm -hmm. I have met some doctors, though um, I do find they tend to be a little bit more closeted and less likely to go to community things for fear of losing their jobs. Um, but yeah, I've met a lot of people, a lot of um, a lot of therapists, a lot of people in the healthcare community that work that are um, 
like to play on the kinky side of things. And as a medical professional myself, for me, it's kind of just, I, I like to say I have a, a boner for the human body. Like I just have that nerdy boner. I just love, I'm so fascinated with the human body, how it works, how fragile it is, and yet how resilient it is and what it's capable of. And I like to play with it. I like to say, what happens when you do this? What happens when you do this? I still remember MVK had a presenter come in and they taught two classes back to back. And the first one was how frail the human body is and how careful you have to be. And the second one was how resilient the human body is yeah. and how it's probably just, it's probably fine. Whatever you're doing, it's probably <laughs> going to be fine. And it's hilarious because, like, you can get a scratch and get a staph infection and lose your arm or die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you can, like, like have, like, a massive infection and, like, you just, you heal. You can fine. have a heart attack where literally some of your heart tissue dies. And the rest of your heart will work its way around that dead tissue in order to keep beating and you keep going. Yeah. Like, it's insane how fragile and yet how resilient the human body is. And yeah, I love that. It's just that. luck half the time like it doesn't even make sense it's, i love the human body i love how it works i get super fascinated and i get like what i call nerd boners just talking about it so i think that's so what i like about medical play i feel like i associate that like fascination with the human body and the like what's gonna happen let's do this let's do this it's fun this is fun uh lindsey lou says yes body curiosity i was super out of touch slash disassociated from my body for a long time so getting into kink has been a real exploration of my body's capabilities that is so beautiful i love how you just word things and and uh, a lot of people that deal with like long-term disabilities or 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 uh any kind of like mental or or any kind of disability have like you have to have that curiosity on a daily basis because everything changes a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you can have, you can be having a good day and the truck could run over you and you'd be fine. You could be having a bad day and a single pin prick will put you in, like down yeah. for a day, right? Yeah. Like it just, yeah. So it's, it's, you have to be patient and you have to, you have to have that curiosity to be willing to explore every day, mm -hmm. which is really cool and something that you can absolutely do with medical play and, and like, you know, do a checkup as part of your, as part of your play, right? Like, start like, yeah. Um, another reason mm -hmm. is uh, like the objectification of it. Like a mm -hmm. lot of, sometimes like when you're getting tests done or like you're being examined by the doctor, they're looking at you like, you know, you're just another animal that's being examined, right? Like mm -hmm. you're, you know, they need to look in one of your orifices, or they need Which to, like... Which, in the real world, I really, really hate. Yeah. But in the kink world, can be fun to play Exactly, with. right? And it can be objectifying, it can be humiliating, it can be sexy, if that's mm -hmm. what you're into, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. so, like, having the doctor, you know, just open your mouth and start putting their fingers in there and feel feel around and, like, grab your tongue, and, like, that can be really hot for some people, and like being treated like an animal. Are you okay? You, you okay there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like having the person just like comment on like aspects of your body, like mm -hmm. you're basically like you're an animal, right? Like saying like I, I, you know, you're. I really like that molar or, or whatever you're looking at, right? Mm, like yeah, yeah, very dehumanizing. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Yes. I think that that's a beautiful face. I Sorry, I'm it's like in the mirror. I gotta make faces at myself. You have to make faces in the mirror when you yeah. see yourself. It's hard not to sometimes. Oh, I like your face. Thank you for that. I was trying to do this, mm -hmm. but I didn't have any peripheral. And I flicked your nose. I'm sorry. I'll depth pet your perception. beard. Depth perception. That's what you're looking for. Sorry, depth perception. I'm really, really, really tired and sleep deprived. I taught uh, a class last night. I taught a class last This always happens on Tuesdays. Uh, I taught a class. I make videos on Wednesdays. And I always make videos on Wednesdays. Smart thinking. Good planning. I know, right? Very good planning. I teach on Tuesday nights, and um, especially if the class goes really well, like I get very energized, and I come home, and I'm wired, and I was so wired up until like midnight, which is late for me because the kids get up 6, 6.30, but it's been go, go, go all day, so I'm just like, I've like, t I've, you can't see, I've actually <laughs> taped my eyelids open. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I, I know. 
I just keep saying. Um, I like Cindy. I like Lindsay Liu's comment there. Yes. Oh, you got another one. Mm -hmm. uh, hearing another person's perspective of your body functions is super fun and validating. It can be delightfully humiliating. That's a good phrase. Delightfully humiliating. Thank you so much, Lindsay Liu, for sharing. Um, that's amazing. Just thank you for sharing. It uh, gives a lot of perspective to a lot of people. Uh, but I'm going to call it a night. I need to go to bed. Um, so happy hump day. Let me know if you ever have any uh, other follow-up questions on this topic and I can come back to it. Um, what are you doing? Or if you have any like requests or questions on other weeks for topics, let me know. Say you goodnight. Like, Say you, goodnight, Brandon. You, started, you asked me a question and immediately talked afterwards. Did I? What did I answer. ask you? Is it what are you doing? And then just kept talking. Yeah, because you were just like... And then I took this off, and you looked at me, and I'm like, what are you doing? And then I, I okay. was going to answer, so but Brandon, you just kept talking. So, Brandon, what are you doing? I was taking my pen off so I could go. Bye. I don't, I'm too tired to deal with that shit. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Good night, happy hump day. Love you all. Take care of yourselves. Good night. And good night.